Hello. What's going on, Wayne? Hey, Chandler. How are you? I'm good. I'm going to merge you over with Cole. He runs the show with me. Just one second, please. Sure. Is everybody there? I'm here. Cole? Yes, sir. What's yep. going on, Wayne? How are you? Is this Cole? Uh, yes, sir. How are you, sir? Pretty good. How about yourself? You need to sound a little bit more excited, bro. You're talking to Wayne Tubbs, man. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm very excited. <laughs> Just joking, man. Hey, everything's fine. Uh, weather's a little nasty down here, but we're okay. Well, everybody listening, this is the ring, the cage, and the stage. And today we are lucky to have none other than the Grammy Award winning Wayne Toops from Wayne Toop and Zyda Cajun. And uh, I already asked you how you're doing, but how's how's this year been for you? We're about to wrap up a year and get on to a new year. Oh, man, you know, this year was great. You know, we just got back from uh, so we just got back from a cruise uh, that we do our own cruise every other year. And, uh, you know, we got some recordings that uh, I'm starting to work on now. We did a live CD in, uh, at the ACA in September, and uh, we're going in the studio to start to do some overdubs, and uh, hopefully we'll have a single out in the next, you know, couple of months or so, and a record for this summer. I can't wait to hear it. Well, um... It's uh, it's a new project that we're all putting together. It's a... Uh, it's the acoustic version of what we do live, uh, and uh, got a very uh, unique name for the group. It's called uh, Royal Blue Garou, yeah. and uh, this will not be Zyda Cajun. Well, no, actually, it's an acoustic version of what we do. It's uh, it's got some really good stuff on it. A lot of our songs that we've recorded in the past, but uh, you know, have a different, uh, you know, like a different version, a different outlook on the song. Uh, I got a friend of mine that came in from Muscle Shows, uh, Will McFarland, come did some acoustic stuff. Sounds really good. Uh, we're excited. Right on. Um, the first question I have for you, um, d can you tell me the current status of the documentary that was being worked on by Wilson Savoy called Do What You Gotta Do? You know what? I haven't been in contact with Wilson, uh, and, I, and I really, uh, truly don't know exactly where he's at with that. Uh, I was hoping to have heard any, uh, something from him about that stuff but uh i think he was having problems with licensing some of that music so uh uh it's probably at a standstill now i don't know exactly where he's at uh uh I i'll keep in contact with him sometimes but you know what he's got a tour schedule like I, I do and uh you know he stays on the road pretty much okay that's what's up cole go ahead uh, I was reading the article that you did with uh, Offbeat Magazine, I believe it was in 1997, and uh, you touched on it a little bit in that article, but uh, you talked about your experience playing at uh, Skywalker Ranch. <laughs> I'm just wondering if you had any more stories about that. It's been a while since that article, so. Uh, you know, uh, you know, you know. back then I was with uh, Monterey International, and uh, George Lucas you know, set up this New Orleans theme Christmas party. And uh, he reached out to the people at Monterey Peninsula on the, uh, the West Coast and contacted uh, our people out of Chicago. And they they came to us and uh, we were able to go over there and stay on Skywalker Ranch. And he had it set up just like the New Orleans uh, Bourbon Street inside of his recording studio. Really? And, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I think Carlos Santana was there and J Jerry Garcia was there. And, uh, yeah, there was a, a, bu a bunch of, uh, you know, limousines for days. And uh, and uh, it, it was a great experience. Uh, they took us on a tour of the uh, uh, the building where, you know, they, they did all the Star Wars stuff and uh, some of those magnificent, you know, uh, output boards that they use to edit a lot of those, uh, you know, films and stuff. And uh, it, it was an amazing experience. You know, we got to stay in, we had our own little chalets or fireplaces and we got to, you know, walk around the, the ranch a little bit and sit behind his tucker, one of only like 49 in existence. Uh, he was a real nice guy. You know, back then it was, uh, it was before cell phones, so we didn't have, uh, 
you know, we didn't have anything to take pictures with. You know, we never brought no cameras. We were on tour, you know, 200 days a year. You know, we never thought about taking pictures, you know, but it was a, it was a pretty cool experience. It makes me yeah, mad when cool. I watch concert videos nowadays and see everybody trying to watch the show through their phone. It, it feels like <laughs> oh, yeah. you don't enjoy it as much as not having a phone. I think cell phones should be banned from venues. Well, you know what? Uh, you know, I just, you know, th this is my take on that. Absolutely. Uh, it, they should be kept in their pocket or whatever. Uh, I think they should it, it, it watch the show and enjoy it. And if you want to take a picture afterward with the artist, if the artist wants to take a picture, then you have something to take a picture with. If not, then, you know, just keep it in your pocket. Enjoy the show. Don't take that magic away by trying to look at a four-inch screen. Are you serious, right. really? You know, I mean, come on, man. You know, we, we've been, I've been doing it for a long time, and that magic is just, uh, it's, it, you can't duplicate it. I don't care if you got a 50-inch screen. It's not the same. Right. I uh, was l watching, I was listening to the song that you played accordion on for Alan Jackson earlier. Um, little, little Bitty. Little Bitty. And, man, I don't think, I think they should have turned your accordion up a lot more than the rest of the instruments. And But uh, I was wondering if you could comment on the collaborations you did with George Jones and Garth Brooks. Did you get to spend time with both of those people? I was lucky to uh, see George Jones before he passed away, and I actually went to his memorial here in Nashville. Well, you know, there was a couple of times I met Mr. George. Uh, the first time I met him, I was going to do a recording session with uh, uh, with him and T. Graham Brown. Uh, Buddy Cannon was the producer. And, you know, I ran into him. Uh, in the parking lot, and he was such a sweetheart, man. He, I mean, he embraced me like he'd been knowing me all my life, you know, and uh, he was such a sweetheart. Uh, I got a chance to, to work with him on that one, and I think one other tune, uh, I don't remember where it was, but him and Miss Nancy were there, and, and, and you know, she was a sweetheart. Uh, he was just uh, one of those great guys that, you know, you, you never forget. You know, and uh, I was able to take a picture with him and, you know, uh, rub the elbows with him a little bit. And it, it, was, it, it was a great time. You know, uh, Garth Brooks, uh, Garth Brooks, he was uh, producing uh, a song on Thai England. Okay. Not and really. I got, you never heard of Thai England? No, sir. Guy out of Dallas, I believe. Okay. Uh, anyway, he, um, I was contacted to, Garth was producing him, and I was contacted to go, you know, do a session, and and Garth was there. And listen, you talk about a sweetheart of a guy. I mean, that was about you know that was around the time where he was trying out for the San Diego Padres baseball. You remember that time? I didn't know he did that. Well, yeah, he did, man. He was he was uh, trying out for their Triple A league or something like that, their minor league. Yeah. Wow. Well. Anyway, uh, you know, uh, I got a chance to meet him. And we worked a little bit on a song. We got the track down. You know, uh, he uh, he helped me load all of my accordions and bring them up. There. He took me to, you know, we rode in his truck. And he he made sure that, you know, uh, my accordions were brought up to my, my, my room. And uh, he was a, a really, really nice guy, man. I mean, uh, you couldn't ask for better. You know, sweetheart of a guy. I'm going to have to check that out Cole uh, did you have one yeah um, the uh, Super Bowl telecast that you did and I believe it was 1990 yeah that was that was during uh, 1990 Super Bowl Saturday night Terry Bradshaw introduced us um, we actually went to that game too you know it was uh, the Denver Broncos versus the San Francisco 49ers and uh, yeah you know we had four minutes of air time and uh, you know we were signed we were signed to Mercury back then we were on the same night as uh, as George George Strait actually and uh, they gave us four minutes of air time uh, from what I understand it was seen by you know 26 million people uh, it was uh, it was pretty uh, uh, amazing event, you know. Uh, that same year, we did MTV Mardi Gras Live, uh, so that was uh, some pretty interesting times, man. Sounds like it was a big year. 
Oh, that was great. No, we, we did 265 dates that year. Uh, Wayne, the first time I got to see you live was when you did a show with Jerry Jeff Walker at the Burton Coliseum. Do you remember that? Yeah, you know what? I, wouldn't that uh, with uh, Jerry Jeff Walker and Joel? I, I got there a little bit late. I got there when Jerry Jeff was almost finishing his set, and then you came on. Um, I actually graduated from Barb and Lake Charles, and then I moved to Nashville. And to be honest, I wasn't really listening to a lot of Cajun music when I was in high school, but what really yeah. got me into it was Hank Williams the Third putting out a Cajun album, and it was just like, man, I'm checking out this Wayne Toop guy, I would love to... I would love for them to know about the other's music. And um, then I went and saw you at Contraband Days, and my favorite song, I ended up buying, I ended up getting on eBay, ordering your vinyl records and listening to everything on Spotify. And over time, I got to say, my favorite song is Come On In, Make Yourself at Home. So when I was at Contraband Days, I remember hollering it up at the stage, and you're like, we don't play that anymore. Uh, is, is, is there any reason why? Well, uh, since then we put it back in the set. You know, you probably you probably caught me in between. Uh, you know, changing players and uh, just not enough time to work it up. You know, right on. Who is the current <laughs> members of uh, Zyda Cajun right now? Do you mind giving the rundown of who's the current? No, no, not at all. No, not at all. Uh, you know, the the drummer uh, is the uh, is Mike Birch. He's originally from Tyler, Texas, but he's been down in Louisiana for you know over thirty years. Um, on, on guitar and vocals, it's uh, Tommy Shreve. Uh, he was an R&B player from uh, the Red Beans and Rice Review. Also played with Zachary Richard for years. Okay. Uh, on key, on keyboard, his name is Todd Adams. He's uh, a guy from Humble, Louisiana. He played with me back in the, the middle '90s. He was the original keyboard player on Take My Hand. And then Steve Grisafi, uh which is the bass player and vocalist. Uh, he was with, uh, actually him and Mike Burst played in a band called River Road years ago. And, uh, uh that's, that sums it up. You know, those guys are incredible musicians and, uh, uh we're, we're enjoying our time together. Are you still having a regular drummer as well as a side percussionist? Uh, well, you know, with the side percussionist was my son and, uh, he decided to go work in the plants, and he's got a whole new life. And he's got a set of twins, and uh, he's uh, he's doing real good for himself, you know. So he had quite the amount of energy when I've seen you guys play constantly. Yeah, no, he's no, he he really loved, he really loved that stuff, you know. Uh, just uh, you know, uh, sometimes music is uh, is not for everybody when it, when they want to uh, make a decent living, you know. It's a uh, it, it, it gets. You can struggle a little bit. More power. You know? Cole, you got one? Yeah, I uh, I was looking at just a list of countries, or all the different countries that you've played in, and I guess I was just kind of curious to know, like, does Zydeco or Cajun music have large followings throughout the whole world, or are you trying to spread it when you play there? Or, well, you know what? Yeah, you know, back in 1987, we, we did we did we did a couple of uh, the, the USIA tours, and uh, we said we. we which that means, uh, you know, it was cultural exchange tours. They sent us to South and Central America in 87, and we did eight countries over there. And, uh, you know, this was the Southeast Asia in 1990, uh, and we did six countries over there. Uh, and, you know, including, you know, Switzerland and Sweden and, uh, you know, uh, France and, and England. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, music is a universal language. There was a lot of places we played nobody could understand, even in the United States. You know, I'm a bilingual uh, singer. You know, I sing in a Cajun, Acadian slang. Uh, it's, a, it's a French dialect. And, uh, you know, it's, it's my heritage. Uh, so um, there's a lot of times there's... That's why I have elected to sing some of those songs, a verse in English, to explain what I'm singing in French. Uh, so I created some of that stuff from some of those old songs to, to explain to people what, you know, the old songs were saying. So that's why I put a, a verse in English. So uh, getting back to the question, uh, you know, it's the universal language. They can understand the feel of the music. Just sometimes they just can't understand the words. Yes, sir.
But you know what? The groove of the music, man, it shows the happiness and uh, uh, excitement, and uh, uh, they understand that, you know? Yeah. Do you ever get tired of playing Take My Hand and Johnny Can't Dance for people who might be at your show for the first time? Of course not. I mean, you know, I... I enjoy doing those songs because I mean that I mean that those are the songs that are the staple of Wayne Tubes. Right. Uh, the, those songs have have carried you know this load for a long time, and uh, they deserve the recognition like you know, from, from day one. You know, so I mean, uh, do I struggle sometimes every now and then? Uh, uh, at the end of a, a four-day run, singing "Take My Hand" in the original key I sang it in, thirty, uh, twenty-five years ago. But you know what? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. But it's uh, something I think it needs to be done. You know, I mean, they deserve to hear uh, the songs that I actually got Wayne to where he's at today. I respect that. Um, speaking of struggles, Wayne, um, I really hope you do not mind me asking this, but uh, I will share with you that. I am a person who has been in recovery since June 20th, 2016. Um, do you have any advice for people that are struggling with personal demons when it comes to addiction? I know what's been out in uh, the press before regarding your past, and I just wonder if you have any good advice for people that might Wait. be struggling. America's in a horrible crisis right now, especially with the opioids. Well, you know what? Uh, it's... Uh it's really a sad thing. Yeah, you know, I've had my struggles over the years. You know, this uh, this past October, there's 12 years I was clean. That's good. And and, uh, and I know it feels great. It's, uh, it's a breath of fresh air. Uh, you know, the good Lord gives you a chance, another chance. And, uh, and, you know, you should take some really good hard time to think about taking that chance and moving forward with a new life. Uh, listen, people have their different struggles. Uh, uh, one thing I can say is if you do actually want to clean up, you're going to have to change people, places, and things, man. That's just the way it goes. You know, uh, when, uh, when I came out, uh, a clean person, uh, changed my friends. I changed the places I went to. I changed my surroundings. I put people in around me that, you know, kept uh, people that had their own demons away from me uh, until I was strong enough to do it myself. But so now you're in the music business. How, what if, what if you're you're in that situation, but then you go back into the step show business and people are drinking around you or doing other stuff around you? How no is way. It different for a musician. Well, you know what? I mean, I see people drinking, and I don't mind taking a drink every now and then, but that wasn't my demon. My demon was, you know, using drugs. And uh, uh, I feel uh, I feel very fortunate that I was strong enough not to trade one for the other, you know? Uh, a lot of times that happens. They trade one demon for the other you know and uh you know listen people people continue to struggle that way sometimes you know listen i was going to aa meeting for a long time and aa meeting for a long time uh you know a few years ago and some of those people standing up and, and telling their story i just could not believe how much people struggle more than i did i hear you you know and uh there's some people that just you know they can't they can't break it and this for some reason, you know, and uh, I feel sorry for those guys, man, because it's, it's a really a hard thing, you know. Uh, I pray for those guys every day, you know. I pray every day for the good Lord for keeping me the way I am today. And uh, I have a wonderful family now and a beautiful wife. Uh, she's very strong-willed. I, I, I have a, a three-year-old uh, boy. And, uh, you know, I... Uh, for the first time in a long time, uh, I feel uh, I really feel that I'm actually on the right track. Right on. Yeah. It's good to hear. Um, I only had uh, two more questions, uh, really two and one. Cole, did you have any real quick? 
Yeah, just one quick one. I, I see that, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you live in Lake Charles, but I see you play a lot of shows here. And I was just wondering, I uh, I went to St. Louis High School, and there was a guy there named Rusty Matoyer that plays a lot of Cajun now. And I was just wondering if you ever come across him at any point. Uh, well, you know what, I preside in Lafayette now. I've been here about uh, uh, right at 12 years now. Okay. Uh, and uh, I don't know the name, Rusty Matoya. Yeah, I think his band's uh, called the Zydeco Crush, maybe. Well, you know what? I've heard of that. I've heard of that band's name, right. uh, but I don't know him personally. Uh, uh, there, there's you know tons of bands out there that are you know doing their thing, and uh, you know our uh, our tradition is, is strong because of players like that. You know they, yeah, right. and you know they they keep that foundation very strong. And uh, allow people like me to expand and grow, and uh, you know, just kind of touch other places and uh, try to get the other people to come down and experience our tradition down here. You know, ben, uh, born in Crowley, were you familiar with the musician who lived there uh, by the name of Clifford Trahan? Oh, uh, Mr. Clifford, sure, absolutely. Right, he just passed away uh, not too long mm-hmm. ago. I'm not going to get did. into the music that he's most well known for because of the internet but i know he had all types of music under different names but i know crowley is not the biggest city in the world and i just knew he was from there just wondering if you knew him well you know i did know mr clifford uh, i didn't know him well but i knew who he was was he the one who wrote Las la patat i'm not sure about that when he did all the songs from the segregation times Oh, yeah, no, who are you talking about? Yeah, no, he was in collaboration with J.D. Miller, I believe, oh. on some of that stuff, some of that Johnny Rebel stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's that's who I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah, yeah, no, he was, I think he was in collaboration with Mr. J.D. Miller on that, that Johnny Rebel stuff a long time ago, you know? Yeah, that was back during that time, but uh, basically, uh, I really want to thank you for giving us your time today, Wayne, and um, I'll, I just wanted to ask, besides the project you announced at the beginning, the acoustic project, I just want to ask, what is next? what else is next for Wayne Toops, and is it possible that you might be doing some touring outside of the region of southwest Louisiana? Is there any way you might make it up to Nashville sometime soon? Well, you know what, we've been, we have been talking about going up there and maybe playing Third Lindsay's and, and, and doing some stuff in Memphis and stuff like that. So, uh, we, uh, I got some friends of mine. I'm going on a, a cruise ship with, uh, Delbert McClinton this, this next month. And I've got a bunch of friends of mine that live in Nashville. Uh, we definitely want to try to get into the winery. Uh, there's a few places in Nashville we want to play. So, so uh, you know the venues like Third Lindsay and City Winery. Oh yeah, I played. Uh, I played Third Lindsay's. Uh, we used to play the Ace the Clubs, and we used to play. Uh, what was that Boogie Cafe on the uh, uh, in the Ten Pan Alley? We used to play, you know. So it's uh, yeah, no, and uh, I really miss playing up there. And uh, we're definitely going to try to get out this year coming up. You know, I have a new project out. I'm going to reach out to some of my friends if we can't get out there and uh, maybe do a week or so. Right on, and, and but this is for shows. You do your recording in Nashville, don't you? Actually, I do a lot of my processing work in Nashville, like overdubs and mixing and mastering and stuff. I work with some really good people over there. My last time up there was uh, I worked with James Stroud and, uh, and Jake Burns, and I got a friend of mine that lives in Smyrna. Used to that, be the drummer for. That's where I live is in Smyrna, really. Yeah, you know. Uh, the drummer used to play for the late uh, uh, Dallas Singletary, Greg Cole. He lives gotcha. out there. Gotcha. And I, and I just some work with him, you know. So, uh, uh, with, you know what? Uh, I love Nashville, and uh, we're, we're going to be coming up, uh, hopefully, in the, in the summertime. Right on. And um, besides the acoustic project you mentioned, is, is, is that the only release you are working on right now as far as studio recordings? Well, right now I'm concentrating on that, uh, but throughout the, the, the year of 2019, I'll probably be gathering songs to do another, you know, straight train session of the Cajun music, you know, so. Gotcha. Well, Wayne, that is all we have for you tonight, and for everybody listening, this is The Ring, The Cage, and The Stage, and for everybody listening, this is The Ring, The Cage, and The Stage, and tonight we had none other than the Grammy Award winning Wayne Toops, and we just want to say thank you for your time, man. It's been a fun interview. 
We appreciate it, my friend. God bless you, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Cole. Thank you. Uh, you too, man. Bye-bye.